Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that we can all be here today, and thank you for our family and friends who came to support us. I want to pray that you would um, send a blessing upon us today. In your name I pray, amen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor and privilege to introduce something that is very special to me and has inspired me to do better and to do my best, even though it can be difficult. She was a teacher at Great Lakes Campus Academy for 36 years. In all those years, she has motiv uh, motivated many students to go out of their comfort zones and become better versions of themselves. She has also experienced some tears, those of joy, laughter, or those of fear and, and pain when you received your Algebra 2 test back. But besides those, <laughs> Moments, I think the class of 2020, 2021 remembers her as someone who kept us in check at class events and always carried a clipboard to help us keep in line, which was much needed. And when we got too rowdy, she would remind us with a head slap, which we, still much, which we still need from time to time. But without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Mrs. Heslop. Lira Mitchev, school rat, begeleiders, onderwijzers, onderwijzeressen, personeel, administratie, vrienden, vriendinnen, gezinnen en mijn kennis. Oh, sorry, wrong language. Uh, Elder Mitchev, school board, sponsors, faculty, staff, administration, friends, family, and my kids of the graduating class of 2021. What an honor it is to be with you this morning, to share this moment with you as you celebrate an epic milestone in your lives. When I retired at the end of last school year, leaving your class was the hardest part. Thank you for still including me. I realize I'm the only thing standing between you and your high school diploma. Perhaps I could hold your diplomas for a ransom. I wonder what you might be willing to pay me to keep this commencement address from going long. But since you are graduating from a private school, I'm guessing you don't have a lot of extra money lying around. <laughs> Your parents and families have made a fantastic choice, a choice that comes with great sacrifice. They invested in you, sending you to Great Lakes Adventist Academy when there were much easier and less expensive options. But they valued your training so much, they knew how important it was for you to become grounded in biblical principles that they paid the price so that you could be here today. Thank you, families, parents, for your example, your sacrifice, your investment, in honor of what your families have sacrificed so that you could complete this stage of your journey, I simply cannot hold your diplomas for ransom. That would just be wrong, and you would remember me for all the wrong reasons. So how about this? I was asked to speak for 18 to 20 minutes. So how about I speak for 15 to 17 minutes? You knew there'd be numbers in here. Then you owe me three minutes. Deal? Now, what would I ask you to do with those extra three minutes of adulthood I have just granted you? Hang in there with me and I will come back to my gracious addition of three minutes to your life. You're welcome. Well, don't say thank you quite yet because my offer is conditional. Kids, most of you have been given several of my step-by-step -step papers, especially during big weekends. You remember them. Two pages of step-by-step -step covered one short weekend of activities. Today is my final step-by-step -step for you. But because we're talking about decades of life ahead, I have time to name only a few that I feel are important. I thought about just printing the step-by-step -step and handing it out to you, but remember that most of you never read them anyway. <laughs> I'm naming my step-by-steps in a bit of a strange way. See if you can figure it out. Here goes. Step G. You can drink volcanic lava, but only once. Now, I admit I didn't learn this one from experience. It was a meme on Facebook. 
Its truth, though, was confirmed on Instagram, so you know it's reliable because everything is confirmed by two or three social media witnesses, right? The point is that some actions are irreversible. Bad decisions make fantastic stories, but they make for painful lives. A man once said, I used to think drinking was bad for me, so I gave up thinking. This is not a don't drink or you'll go to hell speech. It isn't that at all. It's a don't give up thinking speech. You are about to embark on a new journey in which you will be making more decisions with greater consequences than ever before. Proverbs 2 verse 6 tells us that wisdom and knowledge come from the mouth of God, from his word. You can learn by experience or you can learn by listening to God's counsel. Experience is a good teacher, but her tuition rates are higher than any of us can afford. I've learned so much from our mistakes, I think I'll make some more, said no one ever. On the other hand, God's counsel is tuition free, and the wisest man ever, who ironically has lots of entertaining stories, just read Ecclesiastes, says in Proverbs 3, verses 14 and 15, that God's counsel is better than silver, gold, jewels, and anything else you could ever desire. Choose wisely. Choose your friends. Choose to always forgive. You know, that is one of the most significant gifts you can choose to give someone. Choose your habits. Choose to save for the future. Not just save money. Save your health, time, energy. Memorize scripture for future need. Keep food in your pantry in case unexpected guests come to visit. Life is all about choices. Ever heard that from me before? Step R. Vintage, tie-dye, and middle hair parts will be cool. Then they won't, then they will. Fashion fades and styles change. Some of you won't even have enough hair to part at all eventually. The preferences of the culture around you will morph wildly every five years or so. What is old becomes new, but there is really nothing new under the sun. One of the reasons Paul told us in Romans 12, 2, not to be conformed to this world was because he didn't want to see bell bottoms come back in style again. I'm just kidding. In seriousness, though, Paul warns us against becoming conformed to this world because he understood that some things are temporary and fade away and that other things are lasting and valuable. He encouraged us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds because he knew that if we allow God's word to do its work in us, we will have minds set on what really matters. Stuff fades away, all of it, but people are eternal. Invest in people, not things. Remember, for example, the great investment your family's made in you. Pay that forward. In fact, pay that in all directions. When you have an opportunity to invest in people, do it. A quick story. No, not a silly math story. A famous anthropologist was asked by a student what she considered to be the first sign of civilization in a culture. The student expected her to talk about fish hooks or clay pots or grinding stones. But no, the anthropologist said the first sign of civilization in an ancient culture was a femur that has been broken and then healed. She explained that in the animal kingdom, if you break your leg, you die. You cannot run from danger, get to the river for a drink, or hunt for food. You are meat for prowling beasts. No animal alone survives a broken leg long enough for the bone to heal. A broken human femur that is healed is evidence that someone has taken time to stay with the one who fell, has bound up the wound, has carried the person to safety, and has tended the person through recovery. Helping someone else through difficulty is where civilization starts. We are at our best when we serve others. Loving people never goes out of style. They are always worthwhile because they matter to the one who created them, and they should matter to you. You matter to someone or you wouldn't be here. What are you going to do with that debt of love? Don't ignore it. Value what matters. Value what is lasting. 
Step A, money doesn't make you wealthy, you already are. You already have riches in Christ, every spiritual blessing in the heavenlies in Christ, according to Paul in Ephesians 1 verse 3. Money, on the other hand, is hard to get and even harder to use wisely. Beware of the temptation to base your decisions on money. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8 says that God is able to make all grace abound to you so that always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. Anything God allows us to have, he allows us to have so we can do good with it, so that we can honor him. Money is not the destination. It is just a car we drive to get to the destination. Of course, some cars are nicer than others, but don't get caught up in all that. Be wise with the car you have. And wash it occasionally. It's a metaphor. I'm not suggesting you actually launder money. That's a felony, and that would make me an accomplice. And did I mention the importance of making bad decisions? <laughs> of not making bad decisions? So do be good stewards of the car, but never lose sight of the destination. If given a choice to spend money on things or experiences, choose experiences. They stay with you forever, whereas things end up at the dump. Experiences are a good return for your money. Be a wise steward of his money, and you shouldn't have too much problem fulfilling your responsibilities. Step D. Highlights are overrated. We live in a culture that celebrates highlights. That's not all bad. Today's celebration is a highlight. That's a great thing. But if we are too focused on big moments, we forget the beauty of the small moments that life has given us in between. The bulk of this life's beauty happens between the highlights. Take opportunities to slow down and take in God's masterpieces around you. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 31 tells us that whether we are eating or drinking or whatever we are doing, we should be doing all to the glory of God. That means that the little things in our lives matter to God. Even the most menial parts of life are significant and full of meaning if we do them with and for Him. Don't fall into an ESPN Sports Center view of your own life. If it doesn't make the highlights, it may as well not have happened because it doesn't matter. That approach works fine for sports, but for your outlook on life, look through God's lens. Everything matters to Him. There is no distinction between your spiritual life and everything else, because your life is the spiritual life. Do life like He designed it. Many small moments with small tasks, all with great meaning, purpose, and significance. Sometimes choose to be a sloth and slow down, whereas other times you may be a cheater. But just be sure and follow the path God has set for you. It's the perfect hiking trail. Step S. Someone once said, by all means, marry. If you get a good spouse, you'll be happy. If you get a bad one, you'll become a philosopher. While that saying doesn't ring true, Solomon, who again had probably as many great stories as wives, said in Proverbs 21 verse 9 that it is better to live in the corner of a roof than in a house shared with a contentious woman. Men and women, that goes both ways. If you don't find someone who is more in love with God than with you, then do not marry. God provides singleness and that is also a good thing. If God isn't the center of one's life, then they can never love you properly, nor respond properly to your love. Choosing a spouse is perhaps the second biggest decision you will ever make in your life. Mr. H was an excellent husband, an, Ephes an Ephesians 5 man, and I did my best to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Choose wisely. Rely on God's counsel to help you navigate that choice. Step 20. I hope and pray you all fail well. You aren't perfect and you simply won't succeed at everything. You can try to limit what you do so that you minimize the risk of failure and there is some wisdom in that, but you will fail. Failing does not mean staying there. 
Opportunities where we fail are part of the quizzes and tests of life. Use those failures to help you make different choices. Remember, life is all about choices. When Peter saw Jesus walking on the water and beckoning to him, as a fisherman, he knew that his safety depended on his staying in the boat. But he stepped outside his comfort zone, took a risk, and put his foot on the surface of the water. In that one single action, he set aside everything that experience had taught him. He trusted in someone greater than the experience. The real miracle was that Peter walked on the water. Yes, he sank, but even then there is a lesson for us. We take a risk. We do what we believe God is calling us to do. If we fail, Jesus is still there. He won't abandon us. His own hand will pull us to safety. You are going to fail. Use what knocked you down to push you as you work towards your desires, your dreams, your goals, your ambitions. Thank God for his grace even when you do fail. His grace is sufficient for us, and we can praise God for that. Step 21. You don't graduate until you're dead, and even then, not necessarily. Now, that's not a threat, and I'm not returning to the holding your diplomas for ransom theme. As one who has graduated 36 times since finishing high school, actually, I never graduated from high school. We don't have graduation for high school in South Africa. <laughs> I can tell you that any graduation is merely a single milestone in a lifetime of learning. Those milestones are worth celebrating. They give us occasion to reflect on how God has grown us, on the love and sacrifice others have bestowed on us, and on how much farther we really have to go. Learning and growing is a lifelong pursuit, and that is how God designed it. So let the word of Christ richly dwell within you. Let his word be at home in you. Be hungry for what he has to offer you. On days when you feel like you just don't have what it takes, he will add strength to your labor of love by filling your tank. You are rich in Christ, and you have a whole lifetime, however much time he gives you, a lifetime ahead of you to learn of him, to love him, to love the people he has made, and to use everything he has given you for the benefit of others. There's one final detail. And really, this is my most important piece of advice for your lives. There is that matter of those three minutes that you owe me. Your three sponsors, yes, Mr. Gardner, Mrs. Howard, and I are all your sponsors, have a gift for you. It is a created specially for you devotional book for you to use from today until your five-year reunion here at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. All I ask is that with those three small minutes each day, spend time in his word. When you wake and thank God for the day, read scripture and feel joy, you are turning on the light within you. You will then shine through pleasant words, encouragements, and service. Let his word richly dwell within you. Those three small minutes will lead to many more joyous moments with him in scripture, in prayer, and in all of life. He has brought you this far in his love and grace. Spend time with him. He will love you. He will guide you. There is nothing, nothing more valuable in this thing we call life. So, grads 2021, I congratulate you on your achievement, and I urge you to walk from this moment in a man manner worthy of your calling. In on tow, that gaan alles oor kiese. What does that mean? It's all about choices. Make good ones.
Thank you so much, Mrs. Heslop. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say that we love Mrs. Heslop a lot, our class, our school. And one thing that she said really impacted me. We shouldn't trade material things off um, for, actually, we shouldn't trade experience off for material things. And our experience at GLAW is soon coming to an end because today is the day. To us, it is a day of closure and a new beginning. Many have been looking forward to this day since before the school year even started, and some of us have been dreading it before, I mean, I have been dreading it for a long time, before the idea was even first mentioned, but maybe it hasn't even hit you yet. Maybe you're literally standing here in your cap and gown, and you're still expecting to come to school tomorrow to wake up maybe 30 minutes late for breakfast, and decide whether to take a shower first, go to breakfast, or risk missing both. You might be waiting till study hall begins, and as we seniors do when study hall begins, we all pile into Zane's room and either talk, play cards, eat all of Zane's food, but we all have a fun time in there. These little moments that we have have made up the big experience that I've had at GLAW. As GLAW students, we've eaten our last cafeteria meal, attended your last Rikert class, played your last intramural, and have had your last study hall. Last night, as we were uh, going around and handing back our roses to our family, um, I saw the look of my mother and father, and I remembered four years previous, prior, when they were deciding whether to send me to GLAW or not. And my mom is a doting mother. She loves me a lot. And she was very hesitant to send me to GLAW. And my father, um, he's a type to just give me the thumbs up and say, do it. And my mom, even though she was anxious and she was worried, she still sent me here and my dad did too. But the thing was, they did not know the outcome and they didn't know how I would, how I would do at GLAW. They sent their little boy to Great Lakes Adventist Academy to strangers that they did not know. And when they saw him return, they probably still thought I was their little boy. I haven't grown an inch since freshman year, but. <laughs> but they have definitely seen me grow, more than physically. And they didn't know the outcome, and they were worried. But last night when I saw their faces, I handed, my, I handed the rose to my mother first, and some tears started rolling down her cheek. And I handed my rose to my father. My mom's expression on her face, even though there were tears rolling down, I could tell that she didn't regret sending me here at all. I could tell that through the night she would stay up praying for me, the nights that uh, she wouldn't sleep because she was worried for me, those nights weren't in vain. The hours my dad worked um, and put up with all my teen angst during my uh, rebellious years, they were all worth it. And I could see the relief on his face. I know for certain that they didn't regret sending me here because they saw how God was able to change me. And I wouldn't have changed anything about my experience at GLAW not even the embarrassing things, which I will not mention. <laughs> and I love it all. I love GLA because of the experiences I've had here, because of the people that made me feel like I belong. The staff, the students, they made me feel like, they made me feel loved. And that's why it's so hard for me to say goodbye to them. I'm a forgetful person, my friends, my family know that, and I'm, I'm sure the staff know that too, but I never want to forget these experiences that I've had here. God has done so much for me, and I'd like to thank every parent that has sent their kid here that was willing to take the risk like my parents did, that was willing to pit their faith in God. And let me tell you, 
that they have made an impact on me, each and every one of the senior class students over here. I wouldn't be where I am today without God's working. And again, I don't want to forget the, mem the memories I have with them. So my final words to the class of 2021 are this. I want us to pursue the path God has put us in and not forget how he's led us in the past. I want to see everyone here succeed and not in the success measured by standards of money, fame, or status. And finally, I want to say in these last moments together, a thank you. Thank you guys for all these years. Through all the jokes and arguments, you've made me feel like I matter. I want our class to be remembered by this school. Because many times, we wonder how Glaw can affect uh, our child, but we don't remember how, we don't think about how our child can affect Glaw. This is how I want us to be remembered. I don't want to be remembered as being the most intelligent seniors. I don't want our class to be remembered as being the most mature seniors, because we really aren't, and it kind of shows. I don't want us to be remembered as the most hardworking seniors either. All I want is for us to be remembered for change. I want people to see how God has changed each and every one of us. From immature freshmen to still immature but loving seniors. That we've been able to impact the school for Jesus. Thank you, Great Lakes Adventist Academy and especially my class and my family for sticking with me all the way through. God has brought us this far, and he hasn't failed me yet. So let him use you, continue to change you, and love you like you all did for me. So for now, let's live in the moment. Stop worrying about future occupations or your past mistakes, regrets, or grudges, and be thankful for God's leading in our lives. Thank you very much. Very well said, sir. Ian Mosquera is uh, one of our pillars in our student body, and just the thought of not having them here next year is sad for us as a faculty and staff. But we thank you for your leadership, Ian, and uh, for all the laughter as well. It's probably one of the funniest young people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I, uh, in the program, I'd like to invite you to pull out your program, and I'd like for you to turn to uh, the second to last page, where it says at the top, class of 2021, and all the students are listed, all of their middle names that we didn't know are listed, all the names that Mrs. Reichert may have a hard time with in a few moments are listed, but after the names are some symbols and some numbers, and I'd like to acknowledge a couple of those symbols before we turn the time over to the scholarship, the financial blessing that our Adventist universities are going to give some of our graduates. Because as was mentioned in Mrs. Heslop's um, speech, it's not really about money. And, uh, and I want to recognize a few things. You know, I know when we send our, my wife and I send our kids to Adventist education, we're really not that interested in the academics. Because if we were really interested in solely the academics, we could um, send our students somewhere else for free. But like you, we invest in Adventist education because it's more than building up scholarship, it's building character. And I want to recognize some, someone in the class. Um, we are tasked in a committee to select an individual every year to receive the Caring Heart Award. And the Caring Heart Award is an award 
that is sponsored by the North American Division and the Lake Union. And we get to select that individual at every one of our senior academies. And it's a tough process because there are a lot of our students who fall under that category. But if you look at all of the little symbols, there is a little, I don't even know what the sign is, a squiggly, I should know that. In Spanish, it's the little squiggly above the enye. Um, what's it called? Tilde. Tilde. How'd you know that? Okay. Even on the last day at graduation, I learned something new. There's a tilde next to Jacob Pierce's name. And I'd like to uh, just read a short recognition paragraph that was written for the Lake Union Herald where his name and picture and this recognition will appear. And it says, Jacob Pierce is a dedicated, diligent young man who has kept Jesus at the center of his life. He models his life after Jesus as he looks for opportunities to serve other people whenever an opportunity arises. The Lord has given Jacob mechanically gifted hands, and he has put them to use for the service of others. Whenever Jacob sees something that needs to be fixed, he jumps at the opportunity without prompt. Whenever he sees someone carrying the load, pushing the cart, or working on the project, Jacob jumps right in to help. The best part of all is that he always serves with a smile and is often heard singing praise, praises to Jesus as he works for others. Jacob has served his fellow classmates this year as senior class pastor, as re residence hall assistant, and as a plant services maintenance worker. His friends have nicknamed him Overtime for his heavy load of service for others. He has been an absolute joy to have at Great Lakes Adventist Academy, and he truly has a caring heart like his Savior. So before we recognize scholarship, I would really like to recognize character. And Jacob, I'd like for you to stand, and we would like to applause what, applaud what God has done through you. Thank you, Jacob. This whole service, this whole commencement, and this whole weekend has been a recognition of what God has done through these young people. And Jacob, I know you give God the glory. And, uh, and all these graduates, it's what God has done through them. And, uh, and we're very thankful. I also want to recognize one other thing and that is faithfulness and commitment to Adventist education. If you look down uh, the list, there are a number of individuals who have a numerical number next to their name. But there are two students in particular whose families have made a commitment to Adventist education for four generations. And I would just like to uh, recognize Austin Davis's family, if you would please stand, and Austin as well. Thank you for your commitment to Adventist education. And there's another family, um, and we have three generations represented here with Austin's family. And there's another family here that, and before you stand, I, I just want to recognize something. Um, Ab Abby Pittman is also a fourth generation graduate. And um, the neat thing about the four generations in Abby's family is that the four generations are here today. And this year marks the 70th uh, graduation, um, I'm losing my words right now, but um, Abby's great-grandma, Helen Nephew, is here today, and she graduated from this fine institution 70 years ago. And I would like for her to stand. <laughs> I 
Where is, there she is. She's joined by her son, Mike Nephew, by his daughter, Julie Pittman, and by her daughter, Abby Pittman, the four generations of this family. And I'd also like to recognize one thing too, and this is a unique recognition, but it was freshman year, Abby's freshman year, that she was diagnosed with cancer. It was tough on all of us. And Abby went through it, and her family went through it. But Abby, you defeated cancer, and you're here. We want you to stand. Would her family please stand too? When Abby returned to us, she had to go home for some time. She had a lot of hospitals, hospitalization. When she returned to us, every home leave, when the rest of the students would go home and relax, she'd go and get treatment. And she'd come back, and she would tough it out. And we're so proud of you. I'm going <laughs> to compose myself and invite Mrs. Norcross to come up and share some uh, scholarship information. Adventist education is such a blessing. Not only the elementary school and the academy where we have donors and scholarships, various programs that help to make it affordable, it's a blessing that our universities partner with these graduates to help them continue that education. We'd like to recognize two universities that have awarded your student, your graduate, scholarship awards. From Andrews University, the graduates in total will receive $272,000. From Southern Adventist University, $174,000. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Mrs. Norcross, and congratulations, graduates. This uh, school operates in part to the dedication of the folks that are standing behind me. And when I say in part, I mean in majority part, because of the dedication of faculty and staff who give up their time, who sacrifice time, money, weekends, evenings for the service of our young people. And when you work at a boarding school and you live on faculty drive and you attend the same church and your kids hang out together, you can imagine that we become family. And uh, when some of our family members move on, we want to recognize their service. We have a couple of staff members who uh, we hired as temporary additions to our staff. So we already, at least we already knew going into it that we would be saying goodbye at a certain time. But I want to recognize their service and we want to thank them for the years that they have dedicated here. Um, Stephanie Howard has dedicated two years here, and we want to thank you for that. We also have Angela Boothby, who served as a year here, and we knew it was a year, but you have served well, and we thank you, Ms. Boothby.
We've also had a gentleman, and I call him a gentleman because he is, who has served this school part-time as a retired individual. He came retired, he's still retired. <laughs> but Jim Johnson has been serving here since 2013, and I want to recognize his service in plant services for the last eight and a half years. And last but not least, I want to recognize someone who is in the character classroom of our school, which is the, de the deans. They're in the character classroom in the dormitories. And I want to recognize uh, William Merrill, who has served here for five years. And we want to thank you, Dean Will, for your service as well. It's um, my privilege on behalf of the Michigan Conference to thank each one of you parents who entrusted your children to us. Also those of you who made it financially possible for many more students to be able to come. This year has been a very difficult year in many, many ways, but especially for schools. Uh, there were times when we didn't know if the school was going to continue to stay open. And there were some times when the uh, encouragement from outside was to close the doors. And we pursued uh, by, by what we believe God, God's leading was. And I want to I recognize our faculty who have gone more than the second mile in trying to make sure that this school year ended the way it did. And I know that it took a lot more resources, a lot more energy, and a lot more commitment. And so I would like to just say thank you to our staff. Now, because I know that very, very soon we're all going to be standing up in a graduation that's out of this world, I want to turn my thoughts and my attention towards the graduating class. You are uh, a work in progress, as the same as every one of us are. You may have, um, not may have, you have, finish the requirements that man has put out for a 12th grade, grade uh, graduation. But as Mrs. Heslop reminded you, you're students for life. You never graduate from the school of Christ until that day Jesus comes and he looks at you right into the heart and he says, well done good and faithful servant. He's not going to say that arbitrarily, and he's not going to say that carelessly. He's going to say it because of your response. You came to Great Lakes, and you were introduced to all kinds of things. You were introduced to certain civil guidelines along with certain spiritual guidelines. Guidelines that were put in place to help a student body move successfully uh, through the year, cohesively. Some of those civil guidelines you're going to leave right here. But the spiritual guidelines will be yours to choose if you're going to keep them or not. They weren't the academies, they're God's guidelines. And those guidelines if you choose to implement them in your life by allowing God to do that in you, you will receive the diploma at the end of that graduation. When Jesus, our mediator, stands up and says, it is finished, it's done, completed. 
But if you will have allowed him day by day to guide you, you will receive that well done. Because you would have already received it, really, if you think about it. The reward that we're looking for in heaven, God's giving you now. It's that opportunity to be reconnected with him forever and for always. To re create in you that character that we lost so that you can be just like Jesus. So when you leave here today, you'll choose. You'll choose which principles you're going to live by. You'll choose where you go, what you do to a certain point. Make your choice clear every day. Don't allow yourself to be determined by how you feel or your own interpretation of your success. Your success is guaranteed if you make the choice every single day. I want to have prayer for you and with you. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we stand in your presence. We're in a gymnasium where there's hundreds of people. But in the quietness of our own heart, it's just you and us. And I pray that you would be with each one of these graduates. They have learned many things here. Some things of what to do and perhaps some things that weren't taught by the faculty but what not to do. But that's the way it is in life, period. Lord, I want to thank you for the teacher that you've given to us, the Holy Spirit that guides us from the moment we come into this world until the moment you come. So, Lord, I pray that you'd be with them as they make their decisions. I pray your blessing to rest upon them so that one day soon they will be able to hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. As registrar at Great Lakes Adventist Academy, I have examined the academic records of these fine young men and young women, and I am happy to say all 42 seniors have met the requirements for graduation from this institution and have earned the diplomas that they will receive. To the family and guests present here today, we ask that you please hold your applause and any noise until the last name has been read, including any honors or recognitions. So all the names can be heard and their honors heard. And then we will applaud them together at the end. At this time, I would like to ask the platform um, people, personnel, to please take their spots and we'll be ready to start. Great Lakes Adventist Academy holds membership with the following accrediting bodies. The Association of Seventh-day Adventist Secondary Schools and Colleges and Middle States Association Commissions on Elementary and Secondary Schools. And now, will the front row please stand up? Ian Michael Nicholas Mascara, graduating with honors. <clears throat> Elsie Ann Kroll, graduating with honors. <clears throat> Jacob Douglas Pierce, Graduating with high honors, second generation. Sharik Abayomi Mack.
Caitlin Marie Wright, graduating with high honors. Ryan Lee Powers, second generation. Austin Carl Davis, graduating with honors, fourth generation. <clears throat> Caleb Miles Johnson, graduating with honors. Benjamin Eric Berger, graduating with honors. Isabella Yvonne Blasco, graduating with honors. Brandon William Bledsaw, graduating with honors, third generation. Chelsea Lorraine Bodai, graduating with honors. Casey Suladi Castellanos Miranda. Ellen Marie Council, graduating with honors. Ariana Simone Douglas. Lara Antoinette Farias, graduating with honors. Maritza Elena Garcia. Naomi Evelyn Horsda, graduating with honors. Annalise Elizabeth Howard, graduating with honors. Rachel Ellen Ives, graduating with high honors. Jamima Klingbeil, graduating with honors. Josiah Raphael Lowndes. Ken Alexander Meese, graduating with honors. Tyler Joseph Morgan, third generation. Brandon Jasper Jr. McQuada, graduating with. <laughs> Clemence Mushimiyi Mana. Lori Neza Sangiyumva. Kyle Camuel Perkerson, graduating with honors. Nona Marie Pina, third generation. Abigail Jewel Pittman, fourth generation. Adon Lozano Potts, graduating with honors. Shelby Elizabeth Ramashko, graduating with high honors, third generation. Nathalia Marie Salamanca.
Jaden Zuriel Zishan Sancho. Zane Russell Silverstein, graduating with honors. Abigail Virag Sinka. Jerry Robert Taylor, graduating with honors. Adrian David Teutsch, graduating with high honors. Kyle Harry Vivian. Anastasia Victoria Wilhelm, third generation. Emilio Ypez, graduating with honors. Jacob Gregory Zinke, graduating with high honors, third generation. Class of 2021, we love each and every one of you. We wish you well, congratulations, and may God bless you. As soon as the seniors make their way to their seats here in the moment, no pressure, Zinke. As soon as the seniors make their way to their seats, Mrs. Wallace is going to take a number of group pictures, the whole group here, perhaps for the last time. And, uh, and she's going to make that picture available to all of the senior families free of charge, so she will take uh, a number of pictures, she will organize them, rather than, because of the times, rather than having a lot of people come here to the front to take those pictures, she'll make that available for you, and thank you, Mrs. Wallace, for, for your photography this weekend. So we'll, we'll just pause for a few moments in our service for the seniors to get back to their seats and for Mrs. Wallace to arrange them, Kyle in the front, and uh, the rest behind them.
It is my distinct privilege and honor as your former English teacher, your former Religion 4 teacher, and now your former principal and current friend to present to all of you the graduating class of 2021. I would, I would invite you to please remain standing as Jacob Pierce comes and shares a benediction prayer. May the Lord bless each one of you. Please join me as I pray. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we just want to thank you. We've made it so far this year, and it's awesome now that we can finally be here at graduation this year. There's been a lot of struggles and a lot of things that have been hard to struggle through and everything, but you've helped us. None of this is possible without you, and we just want to take this time to, to thank you, Lord, and praise you for guiding us along every step of the way. I want to thank everybody that's here, Lord, and I just pray that you'll bless us. I thank you for this senior class. I thank you for all that you've done. We pray that you continue to bless us wherever we might go from here. Guide us and protect us. In all this we pray, in your name, amen. You may be seated.